fella. We can be that mistake. Let's do this. What it do, y'all? Hey, guys. We are Embrace the Suck 21. Yes, we are. I'm Spencer. And I'm Daniel. Now, if you've been following our journey for a while, <sighs> you know we've reviewed a lot of British stuff. Like, yes. But before we started this journey, like... There were a few things from Britain that we knew already. There were household Brits. Yeah, like the Beatles, Harry Potter. Um, Mr. Bean. Mr. Bean. And James Corden. And unknowingly to us, House. Yeah, House. Mr. Uh, yeah, we didn't yeah. know it was a Brit. And over here in America, James Corden, he has the Late Late Show on CBS yeah. right after Stephen Colbert. Who do you take that from? Uh, Stephen Colbert? No, no, no. Uh, Who gave him his show? It was like... Craig Ferguson. Craig. Oh. Yeah. So it's always been a... Someone huh. from the United Kingdom, technically. I mean, depending well, because on who you Leno, ask. Leno gave his spot up to O'Brien? Right, That, but that's NBC. We're talking CBS here. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so Letterman? Yeah, Letterman gave up uh, his show to... No, no, Stephen Colbert. And uh, Leno gave up his show to Jimmy Fallon. Well, first, he gave, first Leno gave it up to Conan O'Brien... And then took it back from Conan and then gave it up to Jimmy Fallon. And Conan has his own show. Yeah. Well, not anymore. Not anymore. He uh, he's has a podcast now. Got it. But anyway, uh, we digress. Um, All right. We have always known James Corden to be, you know, a lovable bot guy. You know, he does a lot of uh, horrible karaoke. Yeah. Not too many bad things that we know about him yet. But, but every time we've mentioned his name in one of our live streams everyone is like, like oh they hate him. him yeah so where does the hate come from yeah or that's why what we're, about, what's we're about to find out how james corden went from lovable brit to intolerable brat because i feel like at some point you would have to sell out yeah to cross the pond fully yeah and, and come over here there's he takes his expat Completely true to be an expat. Yeah. Like, yeah. burn the bridge expat. Right, right. All right. Yeah. Let's, let's just see. Let's do it, mate. Let's go in. It's no secret that James Corden is a massive see you next Tuesday or <laughs> for sure. But the question still remains, why? How could such a lovable and seemingly humble character become one of the most hated celebs on the internet? Is it his insufferably fake persona, the fact that he's seemingly everywhere, or because he started a fight with Patrick Stewart? <laughs> I'm waiting for the punchline. Go on. Uh -oh. no, seriously, go on. Okay. No, um... go on. You can see my belly, and we can all see you dying right now. Let's go for it. Here we go. Oh! Bro, you do not say that to Patrick Stewart. No. 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 What Patrick a Stewart? Like... Know your place Come on, in the man. pecking order. Yeah. Patrick fucking... Is is it Sir? I'm pretty sure Sir it's Patrick Sir Stewart. Patrick fucking Stewart. Yeah, which I was reminded of from that Uber Eats commercial with him and Mark Hamill. Yeah. Star not Luke Skywalker. <laughs> Sir Patrick Stewart. Ooh, And, and you are sir. not... Yeah, you are not Sir... James Corden. James Corden. And you probably never will be. No. But... But... But I I would pay to see... <laughs> what a twat. Hey guys, it's Wicked here. And growing up in the UK, it wasn't all too uncommon to sit in front of the TV while enjoying a home-cooked microwave meal with the family. Between the year 2007 and 2010, the popular TV show Gavin and Stacey quickly became one of the UK's favorite comedy series. You had Gav from Essex, a place well known for its sunbeds, Stacy from Wales, a place well known for their fond hate of the English and their constant jokes about sheep. Sh <laughs> There's also Nessa, Stacy's closest friend, a hardcore chick with an attitude, and of course, Gav's best friend, Smithy. Believe it or not, this show was written by James Corden and one of his fellow co stars, Ruth Jones, from the well received show Fat Friends. Gavin and Stacey was such a massive hit, and Smithy quickly became the nation's favorite character in the show. I mean, who doesn't remember the iconic Indian curry scene? 
Later on, James Corden became the host of another absolute banger of a show known as A League of Their Own, a British sports-based comedy panel game where James Corden, in all fairness, demonstrated quality banter and a seemingly relatable down-to-earth character. It's safe to say that at this point in his career, the general public was in favor of James, but it wasn't until later where that all changed. Later down go. the line, James Corden eventually succeeded Craig Ferguson as the host of the American late night talk show called The Late Late Show. This is where we would see James interview other celebrities and feature his popular carpool karaoke. But on the 20th of May 2019, James Corden made a massive mistake. A post from The Late Late Show on the popular subreddit r slash IAMA gave Reddit users the opportunity to ask James Corden anything which is about as successful as my sex life. <laughs> that is one thing you do not want to do, is do an AMA on Reddit if you've got something to hide. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, granted, other celebrities have done it, but Reddit is just such a, a place of just vileness. Yeah, you more gotta, so than Twitter, more so than yeah, Facebook. You gotta, you, gotta, you gotta know that there are no skeletons in your closet. To ask that question. Right, right. Here we go. Somebody's honking at me from that comment as well. <laughs> hey, James, you won't remember me, but me and my friends sat at a table next to you and Harry Styles and some others in the Maturian Legends in London's Chinatown about six years ago. We didn't bother you, but you were a massively entitled <laughs> who yelled and treated the wait staff like and when one of my party politely suggested that you'd calm down, you got really aggressive and threatening in a chubby way like a boozy panda. So my question is this, why did Harry seem so cool while you are such a massive throbbing bellend? Have Ooh. you ever considered being funny or likable? He's gonna need some aloe vera for that burn. James Corden allegedly showed up for a WGA union meeting for late night writers with an executive producer and none of the writing staff. Before hearing out any of the actual late night writers, James of course was the first to speak when in the meeting, at which point he advocated for less pay for new writers with the supposed justification being that it was so he could afford to hire writing assistants. Presumably- Are you kidding me? Ugh. What? I mean, look, it's it's kind of shitty that, that these late night writers don't hire their own, uh, don't write their own jokes, but- Yeah. Man. But still, like- Come on, like they they gotta they gotta eat. Come on. Ugh. So that on top of some, you know, treating just, some just wait staff being... bad. Yeah. Come on. On less pay as well. This is my favorite one. Massive in person. I saw a league of their own filming live. He threw multiple tantrums over minor things at the production staff, with him being incredibly rude to them, which made the other regulars seem very awkward like it was usual. Between each take, other celebs would be chatting amongst themselves, bantering about, while James was glued to his phone. At the end of filming, people got up to get pictures with James Corden, and he massively kicked off, shouting at people to go away and go back to their seats, and the few that he did let have pictures with him, he was moving moody as. It gets better. Afterwards, we went into the VIP tent as such for a beer, and the celebs were going to be joining us. The other celebs came in and spoke with people. James came out for a brief moment. Someone politely asked for a quick picture, and he abruptly said later, and then f***ed off to, I'm guessing, his changing room for the rest of the night, as they didn't get their picture before kick-out time. Seeing him like that made me realize everything you see on TV is a complete persona, and really, his natural personality is just a complete selfish entitled Interesting. wow interesting but all right um holy i already shit. i already think this of everyone i meet uh, every celebrity or like celebrity. every person you meet every, no, <laughs> every well, person yeah. you meet no every person <laughs> or celebrity i'm like all right they're putting on a front yeah and that's their job yeah on the front especially an actor yeah yeah especially someone in the industry like mm -hmm. They don't give a shit about you. Right. Ever. Right, right. They're doing it to be personable, to, to fake it, right? Yeah, yeah. Which is tact. Yeah. I would rather know that he's a douche. Right, just be straight up about like, being hey, man, a douche. I, I hate you. Like, okay, cool, likewise. Yeah, yeah. Like, we he, go he, on. He doesn't show that on but he, TV. That's the thing, he doesn't. He's, right. He's very nice with it. He's very, like, well-spoken, but he's a He's a dick, apparently. Yeah, 
behind the scenes. That's that's a sad. It is. It's sad. It's sad to know that, like, you, like, it's people that put you on the scene to begin with. Yeah, yeah, and it's a very small interconnected circle. Yeah, and it, you get in with them like you are good to go. Very entitled. Yeah. Like, who are you? Like the same people that put you on the main stream. Of, of media can take you off. Yeah, yeah. So he thinks it's his his doings that put him there. No, no. no. It's the people that enjoyed and related to him. Exactly. Yeah, he he uh, he's not humble at all. He's he's forgotten. At least from what we're getting from this. Where Mind Wizard comes from. Yeah. All go wrong. In 2020, multiple articles came out saying that James self-admittedly sought out therapy to combat his brattish behavior, saying that his friends and family have even noticed this and say that he needs to get some help. From this article, it says, Corden, 41, revealed to the New Yorker that his friends and family began to take exception to his increasingly spoiled behavior after the success of, you guessed it, Gavin and Stacy. He says, I started to behave like a brat that I just don't think I am. It's so intoxicating, that first flush of fame. And I think it's even more intoxicating if you're not bred for it. His Gavin and Stacy co-star Rob Brydon also approached him about his attitude. With Brydon saying, I said, look, this is a bit awkward to say, but I'm just hearing these things about you and you've got to know that the way you behave has an effect on people. A very true statement from Rob right there. So it's clear that fame got to his head and apparently this is the reason for his actions. But fame, like any intoxicating drug, can break down barriers and reveal dark truths about your true personality. In a paper on being a celebrity, a phenomenology of fame by Donna Rockwell, the study conducted interviews with 15 well-known American celebrities from government to law to business to publishing, sports, music, film, television, news, and entertainment and found that fame was genuinely experienced as a progression throughout four phases a period of love or hate towards the experience an addiction phase where the behavior is directed solely towards the goal of remaining famous an acceptance phase requiring a permanent change in everyday life routines and finally an adaption phase where new behaviors are developed in response to life changes involved in being famous. That's James crazy. Corden, of course, experienced this progression himself. At first, the experience of becoming famous provides a lot of ego stroking where newly famous people find themselves warmly embraced. One participant states, it changes my whole persona and the way of being when I'm out in public. When I'm walking into the building, into my office, people are like, oh my God, there's Patty. I used to want to turn and wave and say hi, but now sometimes it gets too much and intrusive. I've had guys coming up to me while I was using the restroom, standing there wanting to shake my hand, saying things like, could you wait a minute? Could you please wait? It's just crudeness and completely impolite. They go on to say this, you try to put fame in its place because otherwise it will swallow up everything else. It will be totally out of control. It could destroy everything you have or it could make you into a monster. Just like, I guess, James Corden around his fans. We've all heard and seen people who believe that they are better or bigger or more important than the person next to them. There are famous people who believe, I quote, do you know who I am? You are treating me this way and do you know who I am? But what does this all mean for James? Well, I can't say for certain, but it's clearly obvious that everyone reacts to fame in different ways, but there can be an enormous impact on the individual's personality. However, for James, this is no excuse for him to be an absolute arsehole. But at least now we can say that it did start from when he got famous. Otherwise, his friends and family wouldn't try and push him into therapy to stop being a brat. He would have known his place back before he got famous. And now all the barriers are down and he's become the center of attention. The darker side has come out. Now to add to that point, of course don't really know too much about James Corden pre-fame, so he could have just been a genuine arsehole at the time, <laughs> and fame just enhanced that. <laughs> However, all of this isn't purely the reason why so many people despise James Corden. 
No. If you do a quick Google search about why people hate James <laughs> Corden, or even just read the comments on commentary videos about him, you'll notice that there are a lot of people who just can't bear him in general. Even on the Reddit that I was reading comments from, there are people that just genuinely dislike the guy purely just for his TV presence. They have a distaste for his professional work, and if you've seen Cats, which I do not recommend in the slightest, <laughs> me, you can see why. Not to mention Cinderella's come out, 500 likes, and I sh not, I will watch through the whole thing and make a video about it. Look, I would like to assume that James Corden wasn't always like this, but deep down his temperament and pre-fame personality just wasn't equipped for this life-changing experience. It's clear from the fact that his friends and family called him out on this, along with the response from the internet, that he's really not a nice guy to be around. But regardless of how irritating he is on TV, I doubt many people would care as much if he just didn't act the way he did. This was how James Corden went from a lovable Brit to an intolerable brat. Interesting. Wow. Interesting. Uh, like, dude, for the, the thing, thank you. That was yeah, uh, two thumbs up on that. It's, it's, it's very... That's a good way to put it, is, is from that perspective on why... May, maybe he just wasn't prepared for fame. Maybe yeah, A lot of people aren't. A lot of people are not. Like, I gotta be honest, like, you know, we've, we've done well on this channel. I wasn't prepared for so many comments to be coming in and so many interactions that need to, to happen. Like, yeah. And when things like the, the, the point in time where like they were, um, when they were complaining about audio issues, like that made me want to uh, attack them. Yeah. And you'd be like, yeah. fuck you. I yeah. hate you. Stop <laughs> doing that. And yeah. like, and, and it's like, Something that I've I've told myself, and I think we've had conversations about, yeah, is to not get too big of a head about yourself. Even though, like at the time of this video, we're only at like sixty one thousand subscribers. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah, we're still small fish. We're still small, small fish. Small fish. And you know, I I don't want us to get a big head about if, ourselves and come out as you know intolerable brats. But I I feel like we have something that this douche didn't. Yeah. Is that our people will put us in check. Right. And we have each other to balance that out. Yeah. James probably didn't have a lot of people to put him in check. No. no. Until we, he got famous and then yeah. his family was like, dude, you need to go to therapy. <laughs> yeah. That, and what is the most Hollywood, tell me your Hollywood without telling me your Hollywood, go to a therapist to say you have a fame addiction? Yeah. Get the fuck out of here. Come on. Like, oh my God. Oh, poor you. I know. Jesus Christ. No, um, the, I, I just, it's just one of those things where I, I think it's the latter. I think he could have been an asshole and this just magnified it. Yeah. Because I feel like fame is like alcohol, right? Yeah. Or any other addiction, coke, well, drugs. Well, I'm saying like you, you become who you really are. Mm -hmm. You know, you have that crying drunk, fun drunk, sleepy drunk, angry drunk, mad drunk. Yeah. Right? And fame kind of, I want to say, has that mind-altering effect. Happy fame, sad fame, angry fame, sleepy fame. Yeah. 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 It, it, exactly that, where you, you have people that actually appreciate it. Like, oh, man, I'm famous. I don't know why. I don't deserve this. And actually take the time to be actually super genuine nice people yeah and then there are people like him James or Gordon. worse or worse or worse there's yeah. worse people out there oh yeah than him yeah but we're just talking about james Corden. but um there's yeah. a lot worse that like punch fucking paparazzi they just come out and like i'm gonna fight everyone yeah there's so many clickbait articles on the internet yeah of people that have experienced celebrities in a negative light like yeah. justin bieber uh yeah. Just name name but, one. But at the same time, what happens when you're on that pedestal? You're not ever allowed to have a bad day. Right. And that must be. You always gotta fucking be on. infuriating. Yeah, that's because anyone, even close friends, catch me on a bad day. I'm not the happiest to be around. Mm-hmm. Because I'm human. Yeah. They're human too, with a lot more weight. I'm not saying take pity on them. No, never take pity on them. But at the same time, understand. Yeah. The yeah. the the, if you were the thrust, mindset of the beast. If you're thrust into this, like you may not be equipped to handle it. No. Yeah. No. No. And and it's just 
he lost where he came from. Yeah, he he forgot where he came from. At the end of the day, he lost. He forgot where he came from. Yeah. And 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 fame is is a gift and a and a, and a curse. Yeah. And you have to you have to accept it for what it is. Yeah. You can't just have, oh, this is the best without saying, hey, there's two sides of the coin. Yeah, we all have bad days. Yeah. You know. Yeah. It's just their so bad days are are plastered everywhere. Yeah, they're amplified. And everyone forgets the good days. Because yeah, exactly. you're supposed you're you're supposed to only have good days. Yeah. But everyone remembers the bad days. Yeah, that's a good way to put it, man. Yep. And this was a good conversation yeah, to have about good. fame and celebrities. It's just you know, it just stemmed from James Corden. Yeah, and it's and it's interesting though because we have seen his name pop up in our comment section. Yeah. A shit ton. Oh yeah. Like, what? Like I don't get it. Yeah. But now we do, kind of. Yep. You know. Yeah. And maybe maybe comment below some more. Um, uh, celebrities you want us to check out or have just, you guys had any, react- or, any, any heck, reactions with him yeah if you had any let us know uh, your experience with James Corden if you have one because I'm so surprised that like some of these um, music reactions were like I live next door to him or I live next door to his mom or I did like what you guys live so close to all these like icons yeah you yeah. know where you had to have some sort of interaction yeah let us know yeah for sure. In the meantime, thanks for liking, commenting, subscribing, hitting that bell, and sharing with your friends. Definitely, guys. Till next time, wash your hands, grab your toes, wipe your ass, blow your nose, embrace the suck, and unplug and do epic shit. See y'all next time. Later.